Okay, in this video, I'm going to go over how you multiply radicals. Um, and this is going to be a little bit different. This is the second video in this in this series. The first one I talked about where the indexes are the same, the indices are the same, and then I showed you a fractional exponent method. Now here I'm going to show you how to multiply radicals that have a different index. Okay, now let me give you an example of what I mean by that. We'll call this example one. Let's say that I am multiplying the cube root. Okay, so I put a three there where the index is plurals indices. Let's say I'm multiplying the cube root of 9 times the square root of 3. Okay, and remember the square root would have a 2 here. I usually don't put it in there, but we understand that there is a 2. I can't just multiply the radicands, the numbers under the radical sign. Here's one way you can do this. I, I normally always factor the radicands themselves to prime factors. Okay, so for example, I would have the cube root of 3 squared because 9 is just 3 squared. And this would stay the same. I'm just going to put the 2 in there so you can see it. Okay, and there we have it. Now, this is a bit of a trick, but it's, it, it really works well. What you do in the first step is to multiply the indexes or the indices alone. All right, so I'm going to go 3 times 2, and I'm going to get 6. Okay? Now, here's where it gets a little tricky. There's the index of 1, or the uh, exponent's 1. You take the opposite index, and you multiply it by the exponent in the opposite radical. Okay? So that's going to be 3 to the third. You do the same thing here. You take the 2 and you multiply it by the opposite index, opposite uh, uh, exponent, excuse me. So that's going to be 3 to the fourth. Okay, now you can add, using the rules for exponents, you can add <coughs> exponents when the bases are the same, can't you? So I'm going to go 3 plus 4, and I'm going to get 3 to the 7th. And again, I'm going to get the 6th root. Remember how you say that, the 6th root of 3 to the 7th. Now, you always look for the perfect square. So you try to match the exponent with the index. All right, so what I'm going to do to 3 to the 7th is I'm going to break it up into 3 to the 6th, because I want to match the exponent in the index. And it leaves over 3 to the first, right? Because 6 plus 1 is 7. So I'm just kind of reversing it out. Well, I know that the sixth root of 3 to the 6 is just 3. So I pull that out. And then what's left over is the sixth root of 3 to the first. And there's my answer. Okay, so again, let me just briefly go over that. First step is to do the prime factors for the radicands. In this case, it's just 3 squared. Then you multiply the two indices and get 6. Then you crisscross the index with the exponent of the opposite radical, right? So just multiply 3 times 1, get 3. 2 times 2, you get 4. Once you're at this step, the ba whatever bases are the same, add the exponents. Then you try to match the exponent. You break this up, 3 to the 7th. You break it up by trying to match it with the index. So 3 to the 6 matches up. 3 to the 1st is left over. You try to match it up because those are the whole numbers that go outside the radical. Whatever's left over, you keep under the radical sign. So that's how to multiply when you have two different indices. All right. Now I'm going to go fractional exponents right next to it, and I'll show you how to do that. So again, same idea. Cube root of 9 times the square root of 3. Second step again, do the, frac do the uh, prime factors. 3 squared, cube root, that's already prime. I'm going to put the square in there so you can see it, and put the 1 there. For fractional exponents, convert those, again, to the fractional exponent. Remember that? So, 
It looks basically like this. M over N. You convert that by saying exponent over the index. So you'd say M over the N. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to say 3 to the 2 over 3. Here I'm going to say 3 to the 1 over 2. Yes, that's my second step. That's my third step. I like these little Roman numerals to keep track of things. Now, look what I'm doing here. The bases are the same, so you add the index, or add the exponents, rather. So I'm going to add 3 to the 2 thirds plus 1 half. Now, remember how you add your fractions. You've got to find the same denominator. It will be 6. So I'm going to multiply this by 1. 2 over 2, multiply it by 1, 3 over 3, because I want to get the same uh, base, or the same denominator, rather. That's going to give me, in my next step, 3 to the 4 over 6, plus 3 over 6. It should be starting to look familiar, right? 4 over 6 plus 3 over 6 is just 7 over 6. 7 over 6 breaks up into 3 to the 6 over 6 times 3 to the 1 over 6. Now, how do I do that? Again, I'm trying to match up the denominator and the denominator because those are the whole numbers. Those go outside. And remember, when the base is the same, you add the exponent. So 6 over 6, 1 over 6 gives me 7 over 6. Except I just kind of reversed it out. Last step. 3 to the first goes outside, 1 over 6 goes back under, which is the sixth root, remember the denominator of the index, 3 to the first. And notice how it matches up with this other method. Okay, I hope that was helpful to you. Just go ahead and review this if you need to look at it again.